What's up everybody? I'm Jamie with 3 littlegoatscom If you're new here, welcome to my channel. If you've been around for a while, welcome back. Glad to see you as always. That's serious that is bumping into me right now. So if you watched my video earlier this week, you'll know that I needed to rebatch some soap this week. So that's what I'm going to show you how to do today. Well, I actually did it yesterday and filmed it, but today I'm actually going to edit the video and post it. So Rebatching is great if you've got like a lot of off cuts like the end pieces of soap or if you've shaved the corners of the soap or if you just have a batch that you just didn't like the way that it's the scent or the color came out you can always rebatch it and create a new bar of soap that way. So I'm going to show you how to do it so let's get started. Alright guys so I am going to rebatch some soap today. If I sound a little off it's because well I am I'm sick. So, first things first, you're going to need some equipment. You're going to need a crock pot of some sort. And you can use a hand grater. You can chop it up really fine, but I find one of these little salad grinder thingies really easy to use. They're a rotary grater. You can pick them up at most stores and on Amazon. And then, of course, you're going to need your soap that you're going to rebatch. Now, rebatching, you can rebatch soap for many reasons, whether the scent dissipated, you didn't like the way the color turned out, it was a partial gel, any soap that like you just you didn't like very much. What I like to do though is I find if I have soaps that are different colors, I try to keep the same color scheme throughout. So I'm just going to kind of take a lot of the charcoal swirl off of these, and these just have some imperfections on them that I just wasn't happy with. So I'm going to actually cut these down to size so they'll fit in my grinder. And grab my bag of soap. And this is also a good way if you have off cuts from when you're slicing your soap. If you have a bunch of off cuts that are kind of too small to use, just save them in a big bag. Like here's a big bag of soap off cuts and stuff that I didn't like. Just save them in a baggie and once you have enough, just repatch it into some new soap. All right, so I've got all my soap that I'm rebatching in this batch kind of all together. And I've got different soaps here. Like I said, you don't have to do a whole loaf at a time. I have off cuts from different soaps and just pieces I didn't like. I've got my crock pot preheating and it's set to low. And all I'm going to do now is just start grating my soap in. Get this in. And the reason why I like these little graters is because it makes grating the soap so much faster than hand grating it. I'm going to sit here for a while and grade my soap and I will be back. All right guys, so I have a lot of my soap shredded up in here. And I'll probably end up, as it cooks, as it cooks down, because I can talk today, I'll probably add probably another one or two of these in there. But I'm also going to add just a little bit of water. I'm gonna add about three tablespoons or so. You don't wanna add too much water because the more water that you add, the longer it's going to take for that water to dissipate out of your soap and for your soap to harden back up. So be very stingy with the water and only add it as you think you need it. And again, I'm adding distilled water, not tap water, good old fashioned distilled water. I guess it's not, you know what I mean. I'm adding distilled water. And again, I've got my crock pot on low. You see now that it started to kind of mush down, I can add some more soap to it. But for now, I'm just going to pop the lid on it and I'm just going to let it cook for a while. There's nothing really that you need to look for. You're really just looking for all of those little soap shreds to kind of start coming together. That way you can kind of squish it down into your molds for it to harden into one piece of soap and it's not breaking apart on you. So I will be back. 
Alright guys, so I have been letting this cook down for a couple hours now. I went back and I added a little bit more water and I added the rest of my soap shaved it down. Now if you don't want to hand grate it or use one of the rotary graters, if you have a food processor, you could totally use your food processor too. And my light keeps flickering, which means I'm going to have to get a new light bulb, which is kind of sad. But I'm kind of happy with the consistency. I'm not going to be able to get all of the pieces melted down. That's just kind of an impossible task. But I'm happy with this. So now I'm going to add in my fragrance. I'm going to give that a stir. And I'm going to start adding this to my mold. Probably should get a bigger spoon though. I'll be right back. Okay, so let's move this over. My mold. So let's get filling. Don't want to pick up my Tupperware or my crock pot to pour it in because it's very hot. So I'm just going to slowly start pouring this in. I'm actually going to let this probably set for a few days because it is a little bit thinner than I prefer it to be. So the more water that you put into your rebatch soap, the longer it's going to take to cure. So these bars will probably be done a lot quicker than the big loaf will. And then I will bring you guys back when it is time to unmold these. All right guys, so I've let this sit for about 24 hours. It's still a little bit soft. In reality, I've probably let it sit for a little bit longer, but for the sake of finishing up this video, I'm going to demold it and give it a slice now. Now, like I said, the more water that you add to it, the longer it's going to take for it to harden up. You can use it right away, but just like any other soap, you wanna let it sit to harden. For a few weeks. Now one thing you do not want to do when you are rebatching soap is if you've got a soap that you really don't like the lather of it, do not add any extra oils to a rebatch because that's just going to make the lather less lathery, I guess you could say. So you only want to add water, you don't want to add any extra oils. And as you can see, it's still a little bit soft, but that will be okay. I always forget to grab. And then I just use like cookie sheets, cookie cooling racks to let my soap sit out and harden. You can get like a pack of three of them for like under $10 on Amazon. You can pick them up at your local grocery store, whatever is the easiest for you. I just like them because it allows for equal airflow around the entire bar and they're not sitting on like a solid shelf. Just helps dry them out a lot quicker. And I had some that still had some charcoal in them. Some of the bars that had charcoal swirls in them. So I've got like a kind of a funny color. You could add a color to it if you wanted to. If it comes out like a funky color that you don't really like the color to. Before you pour it in the mold when you add in your 
fragrances, you can always add in a colorant of some sort just to help boost the color. But the color is all going to be different depending on what you're rebatching. I try to rebatch soaps that are all in the same color range, but the soaps I needed to rebatch right away were ones that had a little bit of charcoal in them, so it's okay. They're still usable. They smell amazing. I used like a orange and lemon essential oil in these, so they're very citrusy and they smell amazing. And I'm pretty happy with them. I have one duck that follows me everywhere in the yard. The other ducks could care less unless I was getting ready to feed them, but there's one duck that has become my favorite because it follows me everywhere and it's adorable. But anyway, that is what I have got for you guys today. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really helps. And if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We put out new videos every single week. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.